بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك أنت الجواد الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another episode in our series looking at Islamic finance and the kind of contracts that are used in it. In our last episode, we were talking about musharaka, which is partnership contracts. And we said that musharaka, in the initial way that it's classified, there is what's called shirkatul aqt, which is a contract, a contractual partnership. And these are used in pooling resources in order to seek profit. And the other kind of musharaka or shirka is shirkatul milk, which is joint ownership of property. Now, Mustafa Zarqa, one of the leading Syrian scholars in the 20th century, he pointed out that the contractual partnerships are economically, they are a crucial part of an economic system, lending vibrancy to an economy and spurring growth and development. And he pointed out that joint partnership is something that when it happens, it kind of imposes constraints upon each of the people involved in it in the sense that each individual's ability to dispose of the property becomes hampered by that partnership. And so the thing that people in a joint ownership arrangement normally seek to do is to find some way to get out of the partnership by one partner buying out the other or by deciding to sell it to some third party and then splitting the proceeds. Now, to look at another aspect of shirkatul aqt that we didn't really touch on in the last episode's discussion. We talked about the basic kind of a partnership where each party contributes capital and makes his partner his agent. So each one is authorized to undertake disposal of the common assets. And we said that there are certain kinds of partnership that some of the schools of law accepted as a valid kind of a partnership that don't involve capital per se, and some of the schools rejected those. That they said that it's not a valid kind of a partnership. And there is another kind of partnership which involves capital from one party and no capital from the other, and they all agree that this is lawful, and this is what's known as mudaraba. Now, one way of translating mudaraba linguistically <laughs> is speculation. I mean, that's not what is intended from the fiqhi meaning of mudaraba, but the fact that that is one of its linguistic meanings is an indicator that these kinds of enterprise involve risk, and any business activity involves risk. And one of the points that the sharia just will not allow the people who are under its influence, which is, if you're a Muslim, that means that you've accepted that you will be governed by these regulations. The Sharia, it just will not allow partnership to involve a transfer of risk from one partner to the other. When that happens, it's not a partnership anymore. This is what's called muqtada al-aqt the inherent nature and the requirements and the implications of the contract of musharaka is risk sharing. We said that one of the things that's not allowed in a musharaka contract that one partner will guarantee the capital of the other partner. Another example or a manifestation of that principle is that one of the partners is not allowed to promise the other partner that he will purchase the assets of the partner 
at face value. And this is a point that, that comes up later and probably get to it in this episode with regard to sukuk, which are sometimes called Islamic bonds. It's one of the sticking points, the sharia issues that won't go away with regard to the whole concept of a purchase undertaking at the end of a sukuk tenor. Tenor here meaning the time limit. You know, these kind of arrangements designed to last for a certain amount of time and then they expire. And normally what happens at the end of them is that there's a purchase undertaking. So one party buys out the other party. Now, let's go back to the issue of partnership. With regard to mudaraba, we said that one of its linguistic meaning is speculation, which indicates that there's always a risk element involved in any profit-seeking enterprise. But the technical meaning of mudaraba is not speculation, per se. It is a partnership where one of the partners contributes capital and the other contributes only labor, no capital. Now, one of the ways to translate that term into English would be a silent partnership. The capital provider is the silent partner and the entrepreneur or the mudarib, he's the one with the expertise who knows how to use that capital in order to earn a profit. Because each of the partners is contributing something that's necessary to the viability of the enterprise, then each of them has a right to a share of the profit. But if one of, let's say, the capital provider, he demands from the entrepreneur a guarantee of his capital, then that's no longer Muldaraba, that's a loan. And in that case, the contract would become invalid according to some schools of thought. According to some, what that means is that it's not Muldaraba, in reality it's a loan, and therefore, if you want your capital guaranteed, then that's all you get. And all the profit would go to the entrepreneur. So that's the basic structure of Muldaraba. Now, to call Muldaraba a silent partnership is accurate, but it can be slightly misleading in the sense that you can also have a regular Musharaka arrangement that involves silent partnership. If the entrepreneur, the working partner in this arrangement is also contributing capital, in that case, that technically that's not Muldaraba because the working partner is also contributing capital. But in both situations, you have a silent partner. Now, the Islamic economists would like Islamic banks to do more of Muldaraba. And the response of the banks is that there's definitely a place for that in the economy, but that's not what we're supposed to be doing. One of the ways in which Muldaraba can and is applied not only in Islamic economies, but in the West is what's called venture capitalism. You know, there are various kinds of companies that have access to various kinds of financing. If you're somebody who's come up with a great idea in his garage, you know, <laughs> Steve Jobs and his partner, they built a personal computer in their garage. No, it wasn't even their garage. It was the garage of one of them, his parents' garage. So you come up with this great idea, and now you've got something that you'd like to be able to manufacture on a wider scale. If somebody like that went to a bank and said, this is what I have, and I would like to get a loan in order to produce this product, the bank says, we don't know you. You don't have any track record. Sorry. We're going to take a break and come back. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dafar Idris. You are watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. Ya 
الذين آمنوا أنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلة ولا شفاعة. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 30008301132301. Sort code 30083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Divorce. divorce. Solution or problem? Joint family system. Heaven or hell? Big fat You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half. Every Friday at 7 p.m. UK and 8 p.m. Europe on Peace TV. Many people are misguided by films, the internet and parties. But the future lies in the youth of today. Will they ever become the leaders of tomorrow? What are their responsibilities? Are they more interested in the worldly life or the eternal life. To understand the mission of our youth, watch me, Arib Islam, only on Peace TV. Join Arib Islam in Mission of the Youth every Monday at 4.30 p.m. UK and 5.30 p.m. Europe on Peace TV. Dialogue. Dialogue. Discussion, discussion, debate, debate, rebuttal, rebuttal, conclusion. Eliminate misconceptions about religion. Get enlightened. Witness Dr. Zakir Naik in a battle of words in Crossfire next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back. So. If somebody doesn't have any track record in business and they're looking for financing from a bank, they're not going to get it. So where do they turn to? The first kind of place that people in that situation would turn to is usually their parents, <laughs> their friends, their relatives, angel financiers, you know, and those people would probably give them interest-free loans because they know them or give them working capital with a promise of some kind of cut in the profits. If the person is looking beyond the network of his own acquaintances, then if somebody likes the idea, but this person doesn't have any track record, then the kind of terms that they will negotiate, it'll be like a Muldaraba type contract, but he's going to want quite a hefty share of the profits, you know, 50% of the profits, uh, that would be a normal kind of a cut or maybe even more. In those situations, the financier is probably going to also want to be looking over the shoulder of the entrepreneur. So it's not a strict Moldataba in the sense that this is a silent partner. 
he's going to want to have some oversight. And this is particularly clear in the concept of venture capital. Venture capital is the type of musharaka that's perfectly recognized and lawful in Islam. And the kind of share of the profits that a venture capitalist would want, they usually step into a situation where a company is already up and running and it shows promise. So venture capitalists are always on the lookout for small companies that have some good product and with an injection of capital, there's the promise that they would really become very profitable. And I remember discussing this with the head of an Islamic bank in Malaysia, and he said that the failure rate in venture capital ventures is very high. So if a venture capitalist firm invests in seven or eight different companies, they're probably only going to end up making profit on one or two of those. And therefore, again, the share of the profits that they're going to be asking for will be pretty high. And the thing that's always going to be a feature of that kind of a deal is that the venture capitalist is going to put somebody on your board of directors, and they're going to have a say in how that company is run. So what that means is that this kind of capital, equity capital injection for a business venture is expensive, and it involves losing a certain amount of control over your enterprise. You have to listen to somebody, the capital provider, telling you what to do. And because of that, businessmen would prefer not to use this kind of capital if they can avoid it. Now, one of the things about these venture capital situations is that they're not looking to be your partner forever. Once they've made their projected profit out of your company, they're willing for you to buy them out. And so then they will go on to their next venture because they see the profit potential in that, that takeoff period. And so that kind of an arrangement could be structured using musharaka mutanaqasa as a kind of instrument for the buyout of the capital provider's share. Now, the thing that well-established corporations do is they offer stock, and that's a far cheaper way of getting working capital than venture capital. And although, in theory, the person who buys stock is now a partner in the corporation in which they've purchased shares, in reality, your average stockholder will never have any say in the way that company is run. Yeah, there's an annual meeting, and the stockholders, they can ask questions of the board of directors. And there may be elections for the board of directors. However, basically, your average shareholder doesn't have any say in the way the company is run. And the cheapest way of financing a company is normally through bonds. And a bond is a loan on interest. So what happens is that if the company wants to raise a million dollars or whatever, that they issue certificates. And each one has a face value, let's say 1,000. And then there's a promise to pay a fixed amount on some regular basis, the bearer of that certificate, the one who purchased it, receives a certain amount of money from the issuer. And then at the end, the issuer buys back the original certificate. They redeem it. So if it's issued at 1000 then they buy it back for 1000 And everything that they were paying over the period of that agreement is interest. So companies like it because it's a cheaper form of 
financing their companies normally than selling equity in their company. And investors like it because it's a guaranteed income. I mean, it's as close to being guaranteed as you can get. So if you have a company that is able to finance its activities with cheap financing, competing with a company that is forced to use more expensive means of financing, it's very difficult for that second company to compete with the first kind. So there's a lot of difficulties for companies using Islamic kinds of financing in competing with companies that use conventional kinds of financing. And I remember reading a reference to a study that was done in Jeddah, where they surveyed businessmen there and asked them if they preferred a kind of a financing where that would involve taking on a partner as opposed to a kind of financing such as murabaha financing where they go to a bank and arrange for the purchase of machines that they need for their business and they incur a debt by doing so. There was an overwhelming preference for doing that debt-based transaction rather than taking on a partner because if you take on a partner, you have to listen to what he has to say. So, you know, from the angle of competition, there are issues there with the kind of financing that companies take. And from the angle even of the preference of the entrepreneurs themselves for avoiding outsider interference in their company, there are factors that make them inclined to kinds of financing that don't involve partnership. And one of the main issues with regard to partnership is what's called the agency problem. Why is it that a venture capitalist is going to want to put one of their people on the board of the company that they invest in? If they don't do that, it's possible if the recipients of the financing are unscrupulous that they will cook the books and they'll say, you know, I'm sorry, you know, you put all this money in and now you know, we've lost, we've had losses accumulating quarter after quarter. We haven't made any profit, and therefore, sorry. In that kind of a situation, the venture capitalist would be foolish not to have some kind of oversight capacity. Now, having somebody there to do that oversight requires paying them a salary. So, it's more expensive to be involved in that kind of a situation than for a bank to just give somebody money and say, I don't care whether you earn a profit or not, I want my interest payment on time, the amount that we've agreed to. For the bank, it saves them the headache of the time, the expense, and all of the effort of following up on making sure that this recipient of the financing is not misleading them about the way the company is going, is there a profit being earned or not. So from this angle also, Musharaka can be, it involves extra expenses for the financier, expenses and effort. So there are a lot of reasons why when you look at what are the kind of deals that Islamic banks involve themselves in, there's a huge preponderance of these debt-based kinds of financing. And Mudaraba and Musharaka are quite, the percentage that they represent of the activities of a bank will be usually less than 1% or, you know, in some banks, maybe as high as around 10%. Come to the end of our time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.